Should you clean area of rugs? Well, stay tuned and, I'll, and I'm gonna let you know. Let me sit down here. Uh, I got this uh, deep digi deal that follows me around. So do I recommend doing area rugs and add a service to your carpet cleaning business? I do recommend it if you follow these steps. So these steps are gonna really protect you from damaging maybe a high-end rug that costs more than the job or maybe your, um, your equipment itself. So being very cautious is gonna really protect you when it comes to cleaning these rugs. Number one thing you wanna have is a wool safe cleaning solution. Now cleaning solutions are of array. There's millions of cleaning solutions out there, but have a wool safe cleaning solution on hand for wool rugs because a lot of these area rugs are gonna end up being natural fiber, wool. So have a wool safe cleaning solution and these cleaning solutions will have a wool safe brand on it. Procyon is a wool safe cleaning solution, which is a high pH, which if you get a, a, a rug that is really, really soiled, um, you, need, you need like 11 pH. Well, wool safe pro, uh, solution is Procyon and actually dries at a neutral so you don't even need a rinse. Smart solution. I use Carpet Details. Carpet Details is wool safe yet it doesn't have the wool safe brand on it, but it is wool safe. I've been using it for four plus years. So have the proper cleaning solutions on hand. You want to have your regular cleaning solutions. So whatever you clean regular carpet with, you can use that for area rug cleaning. So brings me to the point of identifying these rugs. Once you know you have proper cleaning solutions on hand, you have wool safe products, and then you have your regular products. Now you want to learn how to identify these rugs. So note here, guys, if you want to get serious into cleaning area rugs, it is always wise to take a class on area rug cleaning. They are pricey, okay? But well worth it if you're going to get serious about it. If you're going to start bringing these rugs in-house and cleaning them, and if you want to charge those premium prices, $5 a square foot, $7 a square foot, uh, take a class on it, okay? Now back to... On-site cleaning. So on-site cleaning is what I do. So what we do first is we identify the rug. So on each rug, there should be a label. And this label is going to identify the rugs and tell you what the material is made of. So it's usually on the last label or last corner of the rug you're looking for. So you're going to pull up three and then you find it. And it's funny. It's just weird that way. So you pull that up and read it. So if it is a polyester olefin, polypropylene, uh, nylon, it's safe to clean just like a carpet on a home, your wall-to-wall wall wall carpet. Now, if these rugs are jute, don't clean them, okay? I had a customer call me last week, and um, first thing I asked her was what material they are. She said jute. I said, oh, sorry, we don't clean them. So jute is not meant to be clean, especially hot water extraction. As soon as it gets wet, it's it, it's going to brown and it's going to look awful. So those rugs are meant to be used, thrown out and get something else. Okay. So jute, walk away from those guys. Viscose rugs, unless you know how to tr treat viscose rugs, um, walk away from those. Okay. Those are like a fake silk. They're, they're, um, basically paper, right? Um, and when you get them wet, they may look good when you clean them, but when you, when you go home, you're going to get a call and they're going to be dark and they're going to look dirty. So unless you know how to treat those things, and I, and I have other videos on that, I'm not going to get into that. Walk away from them. So make sure you do a bleed test, all right, on these wool rugs. First thing you want to do before you clean any wool rug is do a bleed test. What you do is you go ahead and find an area on the rug, you pre-spray, right? Just a light mist over the top of it. Then you put a white rag over it that's got some of your pre-spray on it, put some pressure on it, like put a pre-spray bottle or something like that on there, and let it sit for about five minutes. Pick it up, if there's a color transfer on that rug, if you can see, say red on that, or excuse me, on that rag, then go ahead and uh, not do the carpet, okay? So color is bleeding. So when you clean it, those fine lines are gonna look, uh, they're not gonna look fine no more. They're gonna change colors, right? Those white lines gonna look peakish now, okay? 
I do tons of wool rugs constantly. And a lot of times it's just cleaning a wool rug. So if you use a, a safe product like ProCyan, Carpet Details, or any other wool safe product out there, you pre-spray, you agitate, you extract just like anything else. Except for on area rugs, turn that PSI down to about 200 so you don't get the, uh, the back end of the rug wet and it doesn't, uh, cause if you get that back end of the rug wet and it's sitting on a hardwood floor, you could have some issues, right? It could do something to the hardwood floor. So if you got the PSI down to about 200, you, sh you shouldn't have to worry about that at all. Okay. If you have any questions on it, if you clean a rug and you notice that the backing is wet, then you take that rug, take it outside, take it somewhere and hang it up until the customer to put it back when it's dry. All right. So this is not a rug cleaning course, guys. If you want to do a rug cleaning course, I know TMF has got a rug cleaning course. Um, you can go check them out. Um, there's plenty of courses out there to where you can, you can take them those courses and they get more educated on these, this area rug cleaning. But for just straight clean, simple situations, right? Rug cleaning is no problem guys. I do it all the, all the time. I do uh, high end rugs. I do synthetic rugs, but I make sure when I do these rugs, that I know what I'm working on. If you have a rug, again, that doesn't have a label on it, and you don't know how to identify it, walk away. I'm not gonna get into identifying fibers right now because that's for other videos. Um, but you, you as a carpet cleaner should be able to identify if you're in the business and been doing it a while, whether it is a synthetic or a natural fiber. Okay, you have a burn test. Uh, you got you got other tests that you can get, fiber tests that you can also get from TMF. Um, but those are more for uh, knowing what's the difference between polyester and nylon, for example, which really doesn't matter in this case, right? We just wanna know whether it's synthetic or natural fiber. We also wanna know that it is a, a rug we just don't wanna work on. Also, you got these uh, bearskin rugs and, and all these other, so anything that looks as, like a specialty rug, walk away from it. How do I charge for, for rug cleaning? I charge typically for a normal size area rug and it's synthetic, 50 bucks. Now if it's wool, 100 bucks. Keeps it simple for me guys. If it has a pet problem, I will charge additional for pet treatment. So whatever I charge for one room, which is 40 to 50 bucks for me, I would add that. So if I did an area rug for 50 bucks and it wasn't synthetic and I needed to do a pet treatment, that would be 90 bucks, 90 to 100 bucks to do that rug. Again, I'm only doing the top side, not doing the back side. And likewise for uh, your natural fibers like wool. Now as for synthetic staining, like Kool-Aid stains, um, red stains in general, guys, um, Caterade. On wool rugs, my recommendation is don't mess with it. Just tell the customer that it's permanent. I'm sorry. Um, what, what I can do on location um, isn't safe to do. If you wanted to get a professional rug spa treatment, you're gonna have to call a rug facility. Then, guys, there's no guarantee they're gonna be able to get it out either. So you don't wanna treat natural fibers the same way you would synthetic. So with the synthetic fibers, we would put down something like a red one from Pro Choice and steam it out. So if it's a nylon, polyester, often, you know, we steam it out. And still, we never guarantee stain removal because we don't know what they've used on it. All right? so. My tip on area rug cleaning on natural fibers, such as wool, walk away from the synthetic, or the, yeah, synthetic stains, uh, artificial colors, right? And, or let the customer know that um, 
you don't treat that because it's really not safe to do on these roads. If they want to go ahead with the cleaning, go ahead with the cleaning. So I know it's scary, guys. I know it's scary cleaning these wool rugs, right? You think you're going to mess things up. But if you do these things, you're going to be safe, right? So a lot of our customers are going to have pets. And these pets are going to have accidents throughout the house. And a lot of the times it's going to be on the area rug also. So when it comes to treating urine, um, any organic stain on wool rugs, you need to be very, very careful. So on synthetic carpeting, a lot of people use enzymes, right? Uh, a lot of people use peroxide type products, work great. But on wool, you need to be careful. So there is a product called Woolzyme, and it's meant for organic stains, urine stains. Um, you get it from Chemax, and it's an enzyme that treats urine stains. Okay, so it's wool safe. Very important to have wool safe products. Also, quick note, guys, which I've just discovered is not all peroxide is bad for wool. Best organic treatment period is a peroxide. I've been using peroxide for years now. Uh, I don't use enzymes anymore. That really eliminates those stains right away. There's no waiting time and, and works very well. So for wool, you can use peroxide, but you have to make sure this peroxide is no more than 3%. So these products out there that you're using for organic staining, uh, like stain one, uh, from Pro's Choice and stuff like that. You don't wanna use those on wool because they're they're more aggressive. I use a product called Go Oxy from InCap Store, and you can delete that to what you want, okay? So basically, any peroxide that you use, make sure it's diluted down to a 3% or less. So you wanna always do a spot check on your stain. So if you got a um, urine stain, okay, go ahead and spray that, walk away. See if there's any anything weird about it, right? Just a little spot, right? You wanna you wanna test it out. Everything looks good, then you go ahead and treat the carpet. So, treating those organic stains with that peroxide is something that you can do. Again, be very careful, guys. I don't want you to blame anything on me. You go messing up a rug. You have to always have to spot check everything. It's recommended to spot check everything. But what I do personally is I will treat those spots with a 3% peroxide. Um, sometimes it takes a little longer for that stain to disappear. And then I pre-spray and I rinse everything out. So I'm not leaving anything in the rug. So that's a tip, guys. Now, if these wool rugs have fringes on it, white fringes, okay? What I do is stay away from those and let the customer know before you clean it, that we don't clean the fringes because we can turn, it could turn brown, all right? Those things tend to turn brown. There are ways to fix that. There are ways to actually clean it and make sure it doesn't turn brown. Or you actually, and you need to charge, if you decide to do it, charge for it, okay? So there's there's things that you can do to reverse browning you know, in, in these type of situations. And, um, that would be something like a vinegar and water, okay? If you ever clean area rugs, you, you get a call back, say, you know, my fringes are dark now. Vinegar and water, uh, uh, Oxy Plus, anything that reverses browning will take care of that. So what you do is you treat it with that and then you kind of speed dry it, okay? So, but, my suggestion is don't mess with the fringes. Let the customer know that you don't, you don't clean the fringes. If they're fine with you going over, knowing that it could turn brown, then go ahead. You got the okay, right? So when you clean wool rugs, make sure you get a fan on there. A ceiling fan, Turn have the customer turn that on. If you got other work to do and you did that rug first, go ahead and put your floor fan on there and, and speed dry it. That helps. It's gonna smell like dog. Uh, because it's wool with natural fiber. So don't be alarmed if you, if you start smelling something weird. It's, that's what it smells like. So just let the customer know on the phone that we just clean the top, we don't clean the backing. If you do clean the back, then charge them twice the amount. Okay, that's what I do. And, and it needs to be hung out. So if it is like a synthetic fiber, 
with these rugs, you can do um, pet treatments on there, no problem, just like you would do wall-to-wall -wall carpet. With these rugs, you can remove red stains, just like you would wall-to-wall -wall, wall -wall carpet, okay? So these are products that as carpet cleaning already have, cleaners already have on hand. All right, guys, that's it. So I hope you got a lot out of this video and I hope that uh, you really listened to me as far as being careful. And I hope that uh, you're very successful in your business and you just, you're killing it out there. On-site area rug cleaning. I know it sounded difficult, but literally just like cleaning wall-to-wall -wall carpet, if the material is cleanable. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. They gotta find and found a better way. 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 They gotta find and found a better way.